This morning, after weeks of negotiations, the White House and Republican leadership have reached a tentative agreement to lift the nation's debt ceiling, hoping to avoid default by cutting a deal on key spending and budget questions. We still have a lot of work to do, but I believe this is an agreement in principle that's worthy of the American people. President Biden writing in a statement overnight, this agreement is good news for the American people because it prevents what could have been a catastrophic default. The thorniest issues tackled by the president and House Speaker in several phone calls Saturday night, like the stricter work requirements Republicans want for some federal aid programs, which Democrats oppose. The plan on the table, which would lock in a two-year budget deal and a two-year debt limit increase, according to sources briefed on the framework, does include some temporary adjustments to food assistance programs like SNAP. But there are no changes to Medicaid, a priority for the president. Non-defense spending will remain roughly flat with the current levels next year. And permitting reform for clean energy projects did make it into the bill, another sticking point in the marathon negotiations. But the framework has already been met with resistance by skeptical members in both parties. Conservatives have already expressed concern about the compromises made, vowing to slow the passage of the deal or potentially add amendments to make it more appealing to hardliners, according to a Republican source familiar with the talks, while Democrats are most worried about the tougher work requirements. That would only serve to inflict pain on the poor and would effectively cut off health care for 1.7 million low-income people and cut off food stamps for 275,000 people. Once lawmakers receive legislative text later today, they'll have 72 hours to review it, setting up a vote in the House as early as Wednesday, with the Senate to follow, leaving just a few days before Treasury Secretary Yellen's June 5th deadline. I think this clarifies that our timeline is very tight. So, Monica, tight timeline, and as you laid out, there are more steps to go before this agreement in principle becomes an actual agreement with the T's, T's crossed and the I's dotted. Could there be any more changes to this framework between now and June 5th? There can still be changes here, Hallie, especially with mounting pressure to get this over the finish line. And Speaker McCarthy expects he'll call President Biden again this afternoon to talk about some of that. But one of the biggest questions is just how many Republicans can the Speaker afford to lose here? Several dozen have already warned they won't support this kind of agreement, which means it will require Democratic votes to pass the House. And the White House plans to brief them later today to try and get that coalition together. But if and when it does pass in the lower chamber, the bill then needs to go to the Senate, where some lawmakers still have major outstanding questions as well, and where the process can take even longer. Hallie. Monica Alba live for us there at the White House. Lots of moving pieces this morning, Mon. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.